Hi everyone, it's Nicole here today. Welcome to World Card Baking Day 2017. Today I'm gonna to share an interactive light up, let it snow card featuring honeybee stamps and dyes and Chibitronics light up kit. Um, it's been a while since I've shared a light up card. They are super fun and with the holiday season approaching, I thought it would be a great time to create a holiday themed light up card. I am gonna start by building my scene. We'll get to the light up portion once the front panel of the card is completely um, ready to go, I guess, so to speak. I am using an A2 double stitched frame from Honey Bee as my guide to kind of how big I want my scene to be. I have found when using the Chibitronics, you need to have some foam adhesive behind wherever that light up is to house the battery compartment. And because of this, I tend to like to not do an A2 sized panel because it doesn't fit inside of a standard envelope very well. If that doesn't concern you, you can make it the entire size. This just makes it a little bit smaller. The foam adhesive is really only gonna go underneath this panel and that way it's still gonna fit inside a standard envelope pretty easily. I am stamping the Let It Snow greeting from the Honey Bee Let It Snow stamp set. I love that little snowman that looks like he's looking up at the falling snow sky. You can use all kinds of different greetings. I chose the Let It Snow greeting because it has those little um, dots. It looks like a marquee type of sign that word snow does and that's really what drew me into this as far as a light up card design i'm also stamping the snowy border from the flaky friends stamp set and i've stamped that a couple times heat embossing all of this with white embossing powder and i've created a mask for the bottom of this panel with some masking tape using that same snowy border from flaky friends this very much is on purpose. This is gonna keep that area white without having to add an extra layer of cardstock or anything like that. In fact, everything on this front panel with the exception of the sentiment banner that I'll add near the end is kind of flat. Um, makes it a little bit easier when you're dealing with the Chibitronics light up kit. I have done some other cards where I've not done that. Sometimes it can be a little tricky getting the lights to show through too many layers of cardstock. So for today, I really just didn't even feel like I needed to have additional layers with that awesome snow stamp. In addition to the greeting and the snow that have been stamped with Versamark ink and heat embossed with white embossing powder, I want to add some of the great falling snow and snowflakes from the Let It Snow stamp set. It can be a little tricky, white on white. You can see it's hard to see here. In fact, I accidentally overlapped one of the snowflakes because I was trying to save myself some time and that did not work very well. So I just kind of brushed it off with a paintbrush. Went ahead and heat set everything that I had so far on the background. And then I went in and re-stamped that with um, another stamp a little further away and that worked out just fine. Once I have my stamping done and I didn't cover the whole background, it's kind of just some falling snow here and there, a little bit of a scattering. I'm gonna do embossed resist with faded jeans and salty ocean distress oxide inks. This is on some Nina standard heavyweight cardstock and I think distress oxides are a lot more forgiving than traditional distress inks and they go on nice and smooth. I'm buffing any ink off of the embossed areas and then I'm gonna spritz the background pretty lightly. I held the spray bottle way up. It was way out of the camera range and just spritzing a couple times to give some even lighter areas and the illusion of additional snow. Now, the only bummer with water is it does not like the masking paper, and so it didn't wanna come off. I gently peeled it off and then used the Tombow Mono Eraser to kind of very carefully remove the rest. I die cut then my panel. This is gonna be the front panel for my light up from using that A2 double stitched frame. Before I go any further, I need to stamp and color in my snowman 
and the bird. Now, originally I just had the one bird and the snowman. After I kind of get everything laid out, after even after I do the light up kit, I really felt like I needed something else. So that's why I went in and added two additional birds and then three little stars. And I'll show you that a little bit closer to the end. Really easy, simple coloring here. The scarf has some black areas on it already, so I only had to color in kind of a buffalo check type of scarf. But I'm gonna do something even to add another color, and that's to take a white opaque pen and I'll add some stripes to that scarf, and it's really gonna add some nice interest. Other than that, the snowman is some really, really light colors of blue, and then a little orange nose. So once I get my birdie all colored in, I will show you decorating that scarf to finish it off. And once I've die cut both of these, I can add some additional embellishing with glossy accents, with a black glaze pen, um, all of that good stuff once I have them die cut. I generally don't like to add anything with the black glaze pen until I have die cut everything because I feel like it smashes down that ink a little bit, even when it's dry. So I tend to like to embellish afterwards. I even added some white pen marks to the ends of the scarf to give it more of a fringe type of look. Black glaze pen over his little mouth really makes it pop. I started with a little bit too big of a, of a needle and I really thought I needed that size and it was really not working for me. In fact, I, I really was a little bit afraid I almost ruined my background. Instead, I'm gonna take a straight pin. These are pretty dainty little straight pins and I'm gonna poke holes through that kind of marquee type of greeting, that word snow, because that's, I want the light to really show through that. The light is gonna show through the cardstock a little bit anyway, but I really want it to be concentrated and pop out of the word snow, plus a couple of the snowflakes in the background. So just two of the snowflakes are gonna feature that. Now through those little holes, I need to make some marks. And I tried with a pencil first and that's not, it did not work. So I'm gonna take a black pen and just add a few little dots through the center of the word so that I know where those lights need to go. By the way, I did die cut another panel from the using the A2 double stitched frame. Having panels exactly the same size really helps in knowing where to line everything up. So that second panel is the back of my light up design. This is the housing for the battery. I just cut something, it's about one by two inches, I think is all it is. Something that's going to hold that battery in place and it's going to go right underneath the snowman so that you can design it a couple different ways. I've done the push here ones before and I didn't really wanna do three layers of foam tape. You almost need the three layers if you're gonna do the push design. Instead, I'm going to do a little pull tab that you, the recipient can pull the tab either all the way out and let it light up until the battery dies, or you can pull it out and it'll light up and you can push the paper back in and it's just going to take that connection away. I'm showing the Chibitronics kit now. This is the starter kit. It comes with a fantastic book that really gives fantastic directions on how to put it together. It comes with a copper tape, two batteries, a whole bunch of lights, um, and a couple clips. I've never used the clips, but you definitely could use them if you want to. I am ready to kind of start designing where the lights need to go. And this is the part that maybe takes a little bit of thought. So this is where I decided that a couple of the snowflakes, I want lights to go through those as well. I'm gonna poke holes with my straight pin. I'm a quilter, so I have these fantastic little straight pins that I use all the time to unclog things and whatever, so it comes in handy. I'm gonna mark little dots where those snowflakes are, and I'm going to mark as well right underneath my snowman because I want that to be where the battery housing goes. Once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my battery housing to that X. I always like to have that battery housing down first 
because the copper tape needs to really connect there. There's a plus and minus side, and I am all for marking as much as possible when putting this together. I have found that it's much easier to go ahead and kind of over go go over the top then accidentally mess up later on and it can get a little tricky especially if you're going to do any of the interactive type lights there are some little blinking lights i think those would be fun i didn't have any of those specialty type things so i didn't use those this time i am simply drawing some lines now you don't want the lines too far apart the copper tape needs to be fairly close together so that the copper areas on the lights hit both lines, the plus and minus lines. Drawing some little straight lines here where I have my little dots where I want four lights to go behind each of the four letters in the word snow, and then they needs to connect to the two snowflakes. Drawing a line gives me a fantastic guide of where to put my copper tape. I'm gonna make little X's where the lights are gonna go. I am drawing along the lines, showing me the, the positive and negative, so that the negative line lines up with the negative part where the battery will go, and the positive will line up where the positive goes. Because you need that copper tape, which is gonna follow these pencil drawn lines, to hit the positive side and the negative side in order for the card to light up. So I'm going to start adding my copper tape. You really don't want it to tear. And right off the bat, I went to bend it back on itself and it tore. So I actually pulled off that little piece and pitched it. I thought that was kind of a bad omen. I didn't want to start off that way and maybe not have my lights work and have to kind of redo this whole panel. So I'm going to start again, bend it back on itself and then pull it forward. They, these lines can be pretty close together. You just don't want the negative and the positive copper tape lines to intersect anywhere. They need to stay completely separate. They've got to be close together where the lights go, but other than that, they can be pretty far apart. This is the negative line and it did tear there again. I went ahead and stayed with it. I overlapped it pretty good. Um, just because I didn't want to start all the way over and I've done this before and it usually works out okay. So there is my negative line all the way into the battery compartment. Then starting on the top flat of the flap of the battery compartment, I'm going to go all the way around the top and follow this line. Bending it back on itself and following the positive side line, when I get to where the lights are going to go, where I drew my little X's, I want those lines to be really close together because the little copper areas on the lights has to hit both lines. And as long, like I mentioned earlier, as long as these are close together but not intersecting, you will be just fine. So there are my two lines, and you can see you get tons of copper tape. This is actually a roll I've used before. This wasn't even brand new with the, the kit this time. I have lots of this copper tape, so you can create some pretty intricate type of designs. Now, it's always a good idea to burnish that copper tape when you're done. This is just smoothing it out, making sure that there's nice flat so that the connection is really good. And there's the battery compartment. Now you need to take your batteries and there are, it's clearly marked a plus and a minus on each. So you wanna make sure that you are following that same design and make sure that the plus and the minus are hitting the correct lines. It's really crucial to do that. You can even burnish down the copper areas on the lights if you need to. Now, right away, I, I messed this up. These are backwards, these two for the snowflakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that around. When it doesn't light up, it's a pretty good hint that that's the case. I also didn't notice that one of my lights is actually blue. I'm gonna switch that out for a clear one since all the rest were clear. And some of my lights are not lighting up. So the connection just isn't really good. So I need to make sure and go in 
press those down more if I need to. And there are my lights. And you can see that blue one in the bottom. Um, I didn't even realize I had one set of lights that's a red, yellow, and blue, which I think would be really fun for a different card. I went ahead and just switched that one out for a clear one. Again, just gonna make sure it's good and connected. Everything's lighting up, that looks fantastic. And this is my background. I love to double check, make sure that it's all working before I commit to it. There you can really kind of see the lights coming through those snowflakes and the word snow. And now comes building up the background so that it's really flush with the battery. Two layers of this Scotch foam tape is really what works best. So it's gonna be pretty thick. This is one of the reasons that I like to make this panel not a two-sized, especially if you want it to be a push button with the light up, you're gonna need three layers of the foam tape to make it high enough. I like to fill in all of the little nooks and crannies around my copper tape. I try not to go over it in too many places. There's going to be one spot on the other side of my battery housing up at the top of the battery housing, but it's still working. You could put a little scotch tape over the copper tape if you're worried about that um, interfering with the connection at all. Once I have one layer down, I'm going to go in and put another layer down. I'm just not going to... Um, make you watch me cut all that foam tape again. Double checking, I triple check, quadruple check. I just keep checking the whole time because I'm always afraid one of the light connections is not gonna work. And once you have that stuck down, unless you have some sort of like an undo adhesive remover or something like that, it can be a real trick to get that off. Now, before I attach my panel, I want to finish my sentiment. I wanted to use the banner from the Let It Snow dies, and so I die cut that from red cardstock, stamped a sentiment from the Let It Snow stamp set that reads From Our Family to Yours, but I didn't think Let It Snow From Our Family to Yours was really what I wanted. So I'm going to add some additional stamping, and I'll show you that in a second. But I love this two layer banner. I added a little black soot distress oxide ink around the edges to give it a little bit of dimension and white embossed that greeting on the red banner. I really love that little red banner down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing paper from all of my foam tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop the panel on top of that to secure it. I've purposely left some of that backing paper right below the battery compartment because that's where I'm going to pull out my little pull tab and that will make the card light up. So once I'm using my Misty to line up those two panels perfectly, I will attach my little banner right here centered along the bottom edge. And you can see, can you see the lights lighting up there? It's going to stay lit up all the time unless there's something that takes away that connection. So a pull tab is going to be created from a little piece of black cardstock. This is just a scrap. I am using a stamp set that has some pull here or open here. There's push here, all kinds of greetings. And this is simply going to pull out and then the card will light up. But when that little piece of cardstock is in there, it kind of disrupts the connection so the copper tape from the top doesn't touch the battery, which is what makes it work. Now this whole panel is gonna be attached to a white side fold card base. I'm gonna take flurries of fun greetings from the Flaky Sentiments stamp set and stamp that with black ink right beneath Let It Snow. So it's gonna read Let It Snow, flurries of fun from our family to yours. And I think that flows a lot nicer and it adds a little something to the card. But I really still feel like my card needs a little something. I stamped a little bird, another bird design from the Acorn Sisters stamp set, another bird from Let It Snow, and then the stars from Let It Snow and adhered them to my card. 
a little glossy accents on all of those. And then when you pull out the pull tab, the card lights up. I hope this has inspired you to try some light up techniques on your next card. Thanks for joining me today. The supplies I used to create this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring honeybee stamps that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.